let's talk about what is the right livestock for the beginner. What is the first livestock that you should bring in? And I have three tiers here. We have easy, then we have like medium, and then we have expert level. So what I've done is from our past experience and what I know, uh, from what I have learned in the homesteading world over the last 10 years, interacting with a lot of people, developing relationships with people that we've interviewed, going back and seeing how things have happened. And then from our own experience, I've kind of listed these in what I think are the best for beginners, medium level, and expert. You may disagree. Someone you know might disagree. That's okay. These are just what we have experienced here on our homestead. So take it with a grain of salt. Let's talk about easy livestock first. Now, easy livestock, I categorize as for people with zero experience who are not sure if animals will fit their lifestyle. They're easy to source. So, you know, if you want to get this livestock, you'll be able to get them easy. They're easy to manage. That means fencing and feeding and watering and caring. They're going to be easy to breed. You can pretty much let them do it themselves. They're going to be easy to feed. It's not going to be hard to find the right feed for them. You're not going to accidentally poison them or something. And if you decide they're not right for you, they're going to be easy to rehome. So if you have no livestock experience, these are the ones that I suggest you start with because if you decide, you know what, livestock isn't for me, you can get out easy. And if you decide you love it, they're going to be easy for you. We just bought these chicks today. So now we just set up this nice little place for them to go into. You cannot not say chickens are the best beginner livestock. They are just the best. There's no way I can uh, rationalize any other choice for your first livestock. You can order as little as three of them online. They can be here after you order them within a matter of weeks or maybe even sooner. You can literally just give them slop from what's left over in your house and they will turn that into more chicks and eggs. Uh, you can, if you decide you don't like them, sell them on Craigslist and they will be gone within a week. People like buying chickens. They're not too dirty. They're not too disease prone. They're pretty hardy. They're not very difficult. Someone you know probably has them and can give you some pointers, maybe even get you started with some good stock. Chickens are a great place to start. And if you get meat chickens, you can harvest them in as little as eight weeks. So you literally can make a two month project of your first livestock, see if it's right for you. And if you like it, you get into eggs. Six months, you're gonna have some farm fresh eggs from a chick and sooner if you buy point of lay hens. Now I'd love to talk for an hour about chickens, but I already have. There's a masterclass in the Pioneer Library, Chickens 101. If you haven't watched it, it's gonna cover infrastructure, breeds, feeding and watering the systems that we've set up and a whole lot more so check out that when this is over that'll be part of your homework for the week let's move on from chickens ducks ducks are another good beginner livestock they grow more eggs than chickens will they grow more meat they do it off of less you're going to get more eggs throughout the year than you would from chickens they do better in bad weather there are so many reasons to upgrade from chickens to ducks if you don't mind that they're messy 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 animals now you can easily find ways to fix this make it better i got a video about how to make brooding ducks a lot less messy butchering them is a nightmare pulling off those little feathers is like ooh, i will never butcher another duck myself i don't like killing ducks i think they're too cute it's hard for me to kill a duck i get in a really bad mood but if you can deal with those negative things, the mess and butchering ducks, they are better than chickens. Now we don't have many meat ducks or egg laying ducks anymore because I'm allergic to duck eggs and I don't like butchering ducks. So we don't have many on our homestead. So we decided the cons outweigh the pros of why they're better than chickens. But if you are not allergic to duck eggs and you like duck eggs, you'll get more of them. And if you like duck meat and you don't mind butchering them or you found a place that will do them for you, even better. Ducks are a great starting place. Another one you've seen on the channel is a new recent addition to our homestead is rabbits. They're one of the best self-sufficient meat options because it's very easy to take a doe and a buck and have them breed. Now there's a learning curve. There's a lot of people who have had a hard time getting their rabbits to breed and figuring that out. We have been very fortunate. You haven't seen it on the channel yet, but homesteady pioneers, you always learn things first. 
in the live show because this happens in real time. Our rabbits already kindled. We got a bunch of little rabbits out there. We are doing a colony setup with our rabbits, which is like the most hands-off thing we have ever done with livestock. We literally set it up, put them in there, pour feed and water in, and walk away, and they just made a ton more rabbits. And that's a lot of self-sufficient meat that will keep going. It's a very hands-off approach. We're actually going to put a video out on that soon about the colony method because there's been a lot of questions on the channel about that. There can be a learning curve. Uh, there can be mistakes made. But they're not very expensive livestock to get started with. And if you make a mistake and something, unfortunately, uh, you know, winds up with the breeding where it's not working out, you can replace them. You can eat the ones that don't work out and find new ones. So n great starter place for livestock. Of course, if you're going to have them for meat, you got to be able to kill that cute bunny. That's yet to be seen how I handle that. I don't do very good with ducks. We'll see how I handle bunnies. So I uh, we'll see. That's coming in a future video. Now let's talk, before we finish up the easy tier, let's talk about a couple different ones you might not have even thought of. This one my son's going to love. Uh, if you have a body of water or are going to add one to your homestead, fish are a great option for livestock. Fish are animals that if you manage and feed are very hands-off. They're going to be more fish than the ones you put into the pond. And uh, if you do it right, you can have an unending source of protein that is very hands-off, adds a bit of fun to your homestead, just all around great addition. We're talking about putting a pond on the property because, man, it's really hard to beat fish for easy protein. The, the fish in the picture here is a bass, not my first selection. I'd have some panfish, but the pond in the back is on my brother's, my brother-in-law's homestead and a nice little pond. He's been managing it and it's full of fish and they just keep every year more and more. So good option. And then another one that you don't see in the picture, but it's probably attached to the fishing pole could be considered livestock worms. You can take worms. You can do them in an apartment. If you're in an apartment now, feed them scraps. They create worm casings. You can use that to add nutrition to your gardens. And, uh, so worms are another additional, you know, beginner livestock, not super fun if you want something to pet and love on, but thought it was worth mentioning something to consider and an additional source of protein on your homestead. If you want to feed your chickens some worms, go catch a few fish from your pond, something that we have to consider. Now let's go to medium difficulty livestock. These are for people who like owning livestock and are ready to try something a bit more complicated. So not necessarily a hard animal, uh, not something that's going to be a lot of effort and a lot of work and give you a really hard time, but an animal that you're going to have to have a little bit more stick to -itiveness. It's going to be harder to rehome these animals, harder to source them in the first place, so once you finally get them, you're going to want to keep them. So once you get over the, the easy livestock and you're like, no, I like livestock, I like having animals, I'm gonna stick to this, that's where these come in. So the first one, and this might surprise you, but hands down, I could argue this all day, mini Jersey cows. These I almost put in the first level of easy livestock. The only thing that bumped it out was the fact that they are a more expensive animal, they're harder to source, and they would be harder to rehome. So you have to be dedicated, and they're a dairy animal. So I would never put a dairy animal as a beginner livestock because you have to care for a dairy animal. You have to be there to do the milkings all the time. It is a lifestyle adjustment. So you have to know, hey, I've owned chickens for five years. I've been there every morning and every evening for my chickens. I love that, that lifestyle. I'm not, I don't feel like it's a ball and chain. I'm ready to go to the next level. If that's where you are, then many jerseys are such an easy animal if you're already accustomed to homestead life. Um, I, I am, I'm going to make a video soon about how the mini jersey is the best hands-down homestead animal. And it's because no other animal out there... <laughs> my son's giving me the thumbs down. He's saying, no, nope, chicken's dead. Sorry, buddy. No other animal will go out into your pasture with one single strand of twine and stepping posts 
I can take my girls out into the field. No other animal is that easy to fence. They respect it. They are trained to the fence. I have very well-mannered, respectful uh, mini jerseys. They go out and they eat that grass. And by the next, I mean, within hours, they've turned that grass into a product. Every single day I get a product from them, milk. And that product can be turned into all kinds of other things. So you might say, well, a goat can do that too. Not exactly. A goat can't turn that same grass into the butter that the cow can because there's more cream. And from that also you get ice cream and all the other things you got to do with cream. So they got more product there. And then on the flip side, I also, if one of my cows have a bull and we don't want to keep him for breeding, now I have meat. So I have meat. I have milk, I have butter, I have cream cheese and cheese and ice cream. You can create so many things from this one little animal that is incredibly easy to fence, not a hard animal to work with, not a dangerous animal to work with, mini jerseys. And you're thinking, well, what about bulls, Austin? I got to get a bull and bulls can be dangerous. No, you don't. Because anywhere that you live, I promise you there's somebody who has a bigger farm with a guy who comes every week and does AI, artificial insemination, and he can inseminate your cows. You don't even need a bull. You are very hard-pressed to find a person who can AI a goat or AI a pig for you. I guarantee you, if you, if you're willing to pay him, you're going to find someone who can AI your cows. So, of course, somebody out there is going to be the exception. Somebody's going to leave a comment and say, Austin, I can't find anybody. But if that's the case, you could learn. It's not too hard. You could learn it. Um, so just a fantastic animal can do so much. They're docile. They're um, easy to fence, easy to work with. I just, I can't say enough good things about the mini jerseys. So if you're ready to get into the next tier of homesteading, that stands alone from any other dairy cow. This doesn't include all dairy cows. This doesn't even include other breeds of mini cows, which we had a question about that the Dakota asked, and I'll answer at the end. Next animal, mid-level, pigs. Again, maybe surprising to see it so soon in the, in the lineup, but I think all you have to have for pigs is good fencing and a steady supply of feed. That is it. Pigs might get worms, and it might affect their growth a little bit. They can get sick, you gotta pay attention, but all animals can get sick from something. Uh, but if you have good fencing, your pig is gonna go from a little pig to a big giant pig, and you're gonna be ready to harvest that pig. We had pigs before we had goats. I have never in my life lost a pig to anything that was not planned. You know, they've never died from sickness, they've never died, they've never escaped and got injured or killed by a predator. My pigs, only time my pigs died was when we brought them to the butcher and they had a planned death and it went quick and quiet and it was over like that. I have lost goats. I have lost sheep. I have not ever lost a pig. So great uh, option. Again, start with feeders and then if you really love pigs, eventually you can go to the breeding side of things. I'm not going to spend too long on pigs because I could spend an hour talking about pigs, but again, I already have. In the Pioneer Library, there is an entire master class, Raising Feeder Pigs. It will tell you everything you need to get started with pigs, infrastructure, the breeds, who to buy from, feeding them, watering them, uh, your schedule throughout the season, and more. So when you're done with this, go and check out B, uh, go and check out Raising Feeder Pigs in master class in the Pioneer Library. The next one is bees. Again, one that maybe we don't think of as livestock all the time, but definitely livestock. They have their own unique set of challenges. I will never do bees myself because I just don't like being around bees. But if you can get past being stung, they are technical. There are some difficulties to overcome, and you can lose an entire hive. People do. A lot of times beginners wind up losing entire hives. But there's no other livestock that you can give less daily attention to than bees other than maybe fish, which we talked about. But bees, you can manage on a once every couple week basis, depending on the time of year. 
a lot of time of the year, they're going to water themselves and feed themselves without you. Now, that's not the case year round. You are going to have to supplement them and care for them through the hard times. But what other animal could you like take care of and then like go on a two week vacation and then come back and check on them and they're still good? There's very few animals you can get away with that. So for next level stuff, uh, mid tier bees are a good option. And then at the end of the mid level tier, we're going to put all turkeys, quail, pigeons, guineas, all the other fowl. Uh, they all have their pros and cons. Some they're not as easy as or as domesticated as chickens. Some are more wild. Some are harder to keep track of. Uh, but they're all a good option for next level livestock. Finally, let's talk about the difficult livestock. And these are for people who have experience with livestock. You know that you're ready to take on breeding, more difficult veterinary procedures. You're gonna be able to deal with the escape artists, all those kind of issues. So the first in the more difficult livestock, I would put Nigerian dwarf goats. Uh, these are like regular goats. I have found them to be a bit hardier than regular you know, dairy goats, they're smaller, so they're easier to fence and uh, easier to manage. And then from Nigerian dwarfs, you could bring in the other kinds of goats. Dairy goats being the most challenging before you have dairy goats. Uh, meat goats, especially like Kiko goats, are a little bit more hardy oftentimes. As you've seen, we have had difficulty with dairy goats. For years, we have difficulty with dairy goats. They're one of the hardest animals to have on a homestead because what we talked about before, they're a wild animal that's been domesticated. Um, you know, you gotta deal with the hoofs, you gotta deal with the horns, you gotta deal with the worms and the browsing, so they're tough. Along with them, uh, I, I feel sheep. Sheep are harder to fence. You got the insulation of all that wool. You can have hair sheep, which would be easier because you don't have to fleece, uh, do the deal with the fleece. <clears throat> Sorry, the shearing. Uh, you can d get worm issues with sheep because of the nature of how they graze. They'll chew right down to the bottom. So if you don't move them enough, you will have some worm issues. And then uh, again, we talk dairy goats. So kind of sheep and dairy goats are all in the same category here. You're going to be dealing with worms. You're going to be dealing with this budding. You're going to be dealing with hoof trimming. Um, there are more complications to keeping sheep and goats. Just... What we have found in all our experience, like I said, we've lost very few animals homesteading over the years. The ones we've lost have been sheep and goats. And to things, they've poisoned themselves on forages, uh, things they weren't supposed to eat that we didn't know about. They dove right in and chewed up and ate. Uh, we've dealt with worm issues time and time again. Even with chemical dewormers, even using chemical dewormers, we've had problems with them adapting the worm loads being so high. Uh, that the dewormers we were using were no longer working. So I really don't suggest you start with these livestock. Another one not good for a starter would be beef. Uh, bulls, you're going to need a bull. Now again, you can go the AI route, but if you do have a bunch of beef, you're going to have bulls, which you can then cut the bulls so you don't have all that testosterone in the animal and he's not trying to fight you. But if you are dealing with bulls or beef cattle in general, they are a larger livestock so they could be more dangerous. Uh, they can be harder to contain and even just handling and working with them. If you're new to livestock, don't start with beef. Uh, plus, beef take a long time to finish. So if you're not sure that you want to have livestock in the first place and you get into beef, you're in a three-year project. And that's a long time to be dedicated to an animal that you're not really sure you want to do. So I wouldn't start with that. Again, I wouldn't start with full-size production dairy animals. Also, if you're dealing with bulls with dairy animals, they can be just as dangerous. Now, you can do AI for full size, just like you can on the mini jerseys, so that makes things simpler there. Uh, but with full size dairy animals, the difference with the mini jerseys, calf sharing may not work for a full size dairy animal. Lots of production means you're going to have to milk probably twice a day. Mini jerseys, we can go weeks at a time without milking and then start milking again. Because they're a low production animal that adjusts to the needs of their calf, we can turn that switch on and off. We can have a life and still have a dairy cow. You cannot do that with a full size uh, production level milk cow. You gotta milk that thing twice a day and be there every day to do that. And when you can't, someone else needs to be there. 
So it's very different than having like a mini jersey in the backyard. And finally, uh, I put these animals here because I have zero experience and uh, I'm not telling you that they're harder or easier. Don't forget there's horses, there's camelids, there's donkeys. Uh, camelids include alpacas and llamas. Um, so there's a whole lot of other livestock out there. They are, they're larger. They have some unique uh, veterinary things to deal with, with the worms and that sort of thing. So they can be challenging animals. And, uh, you know, anyone who grew up with horses is going to be like, oh, it's not a big deal. But to a newbie, it would be a big deal. So just putting that out there. We've talked about all the basic livestock options. Where do you go next? You go on over to our website and just give me a moment here. Uh, we've just finished up all the livestock. We've talked about all the golden rules. What do you do next? Where's your homework? The Pioneer Library is full of information about livestock. It is full. There are 16 pages here of different things that are mostly livestock. But I wanted to show you briefly as pioneers how it works, how you can find what you're looking for a little bit better. So if you want to, for example, listen to all the podcasts, you could click on podcasts if you want to watch just the videos. But then here we have by category. If you go by category farming, I have a lot of the livestock that we've covered a lot of its own category here. So let's say you want to see all the videos and listen to all the podcasts on chickens. Click here and anything that is organized with the tag chickens will show up. So here's all the bonus content, interviews, videos, podcasts. There's four pages of this stuff you'll find. Building the chicken tractor that we used for home studies, chicken tractor, all kinds of stuff. And then the other thing to check out, if you go to classes, that's where you'll find the Raising Feeder Pigs Masterclass. You'll find, if we go a little bit further, um, the Chickens 101 Masterclass. You'll find a Movable Netting Masterclass. And uh, this was a chicken farming class. This is just a podcast. There's no video. This was back. I used to teach a class at a local college back in Connecticut about chicken farming 101 and you can download that lesson I actually just recorded the class as I taught it live so that's one to listen to as you drive so the pioneer library is full of information on livestock and I just wanted to show you how to find it you know if you want to do goats click on goats and man there's just so much stuff about goats that Kiko goats pioneer version is an awesome one that's an interview with the guy who actually bred Kiko goats in the first place he's the guy who named them and made them this is how to make money with goats. So there's just a ton of information in the Pioneer Library that can help you get started with livestock and get to the next level with livestock. You look at that smile on Kay's face, enjoying her cow out there, uh, eating some hay and you know just having a nice life. I think every homestead would benefit from livestock. Every person would benefit from owning livestock. I know this because I didn't want livestock. I wasn't interested. And here I am like raving about my favorite mini Jersey cows that I've just grown to love so much. They will make you a better person. They will teach you about yourself. They will teach you about sustainability. You'll, they'll work your land like the good workers that they are, the best employees you could possibly have. You'll just enjoy watching them and spending time with them, but they are a responsibility. So start slow, start small. And how many should you get your first year? And then from there, how, how do you grow? We're not gonna talk about that tonight. That'll be in the last lesson, lesson five of the Start Homesteading Today course. We'll do that lesson next week. And there you're gonna learn about how to grow your homestead at a scale that you can manage year by year where it never gets so big that you burn up and quit or you wind up having to sell everything and get out of it. Uh, we'll talk about all that, how to grow your homestead sustainably over the years in the last lesson. Hey, I got some big news for you. This video was a small excerpt from our livestock lesson in our Start Homesteading Today course. If you would like to take this entire course, this entire course, the Start Homesteading Today course, is now free at our website, thisishomesteady.com. 
All you have to do to take this five hour beginner homesteader course that goes in depth in every topic you need to know about land purchasing, gardening, livestock, just click here to join our email list and you'll get an invitation to take this course, the entire course for free.